In this video, you're going to see how to link different files together and analyze data sets using Power Pivot in Excel. In our current folder, we have three Excel files. The first contains branch location info, while the second contains loan type codes. The third file contains a larger data set of loan detail data for year-to-date loan originations. When we open the loan originations file, we have a field for branch ID code and one for a loan type code. These two fields correspond to fields on our other two tables that contain definitions of what these codes mean. When we open our branch locations file, we have the related branch ID field as well as branch name and employee counts. When we open the loan type codes file, we have a related loan type code field as well as descriptions for these codes. We'll link these related fields together in Power Pivot. First, we'll create a new Excel file where our Power Pivot data model will live. Next, we need to activate Power Pivot in Excel. Go to File, then select Options. In the Options window, select Add-ins. Then go down to the Manage drop-down list at the bottom, select Com Add-ins, and click Go. Check the box next to Power Pivot and click OK. You should now see a new ribbon called Power Pivot. Now we'll import our three files. Click on Manage at the top left. In the Get External Data area, click on the options from other sources. Then scroll down to the bottom to import an Excel file and click Next. Following that, select the Browse button and navigate to the path where your files are located. We'll start with our Branch Locations file. We'll also check the box to use our row headers from that file and hit Next. You can click on the Preview button to see how your data looks. Looks good. So we'll click OK and then Finish. After that, you should see a success import message. Once you click close, you should see a data view of the file contents. Now we'll repeat these steps for our other two tables. Next, we'll switch to the diagram view at the top. This gives us a visual of our three datasets and allows us to link them together based on related fields. First, we'll link the branch ID field from the branch location table to the branch ID field on the year-to-date originations table. Click on the related field from one table and drag it to the related field on the second table. The relationship is one to many meaning there is one unique value for each branch ID on the branch location table, but multiple related matches of branch IDs on the loan origination table. We do the same process to link the loan code fields on the loan type table to the originations table. The relationship here is also one to many. Following that, we'll change our view back to the data view. Here you can see we now have three tabs for each of our three tables. We'll go back to our Loan Originations tab and set some formats. For our date column, we'll use a month-day-year format to remove the timestamps on the end. Next, we'll change the format of our amount field to an accounting style. Following that, we'll change our interest field to a percentage format. Since our tables are now linked, we can now add additional columns on our originations detail file that includes the description fields from our other tables. In the first cell and the next blank column hit equals, then start typing related. This brings up a list of the related tables and their fields. We'll select branch location, add a closing parenthesis and hit enter. Next, double click in the column header to change it. We'll repeat this step to bring in the loan type description from our loan type codes table. Keep in mind that the formula is actually being input in the formula bar at the top. Now we'll add a calculated column that multiplies the loan amount times the interest rate. Later on, we'll sum this product output and divide by the sum of the amount field to get the weighted average. Simply click on the amount field, followed by an asterisk to multiply, click on the rate field, and hit enter. We'll change the header name to the product of amount and rate. 
Now we'll come down to the bottom of our view to add some measures. Our first measure will divide the sum of the rate and amount product field we just created by the sum of the loan amount field. The output of this measure gives us the weighted average interest rate. We'll change the measure name to the acronym for weighted average. After that, we'll format this cell as a percentage. Now we'll add one more measure that divides the sum of the loan amount field by the sum of the employee counts on the branch locations table to get loan volume per employee count. We'll format this measure in accounting style and change the name to volume per employee. Now we can take the data from our model and analyze it. We'll go back to our spreadsheet for this data model. Go to the Insert ribbon and select the option to insert a pivot table. Then select from Data Model as the source. We'll place this on the existing sheet. In the dialog box to the right, our three source tables are listed. We can expand these tables to see the available fields. This includes the related field columns we added as well as our calculated column and the measures. For our row values, we'll add location from the originations table, followed by employee count from the employee table. We'll also add loan type from the originations table. Next, we'll go up to the design ribbon and change the view to a tabular layout so that these row labels appear side by side. In our Values section, we'll add our Weighted Average Interest Rate Measure field. We'll also include our Loan Amount field and our other measure field that displays loan volume per employee. Next, we'll add a slicer to our Pivot Table. To do this, go up to the Pivot Table Analyze ribbon and click on the option to insert a slicer. We'll select the Loan Type field as our criteria for our slicer. This allows us to quickly filter our data by different loan types and compare branch level performance. Although the North Branch has the highest amount total of business loans, when we look at the volume per employee field, we can see that the Central Branch is clearly the most efficient on a per employee basis. These calculated measure fields and power pivot can quickly provide users with valuable insights on datasets. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.